I made a previous video where I explained how the Queen in Game of Thrones is one of the most privileged people in Westeros. I mean, in a world where peasants are dying from hunger, from disease, from war, the Queen is safe in a castle, she's being taken care of by an army of servants, she gets to eat whatever she wants, she gets to drink the finest wines in the land, she holds a lot of power and prestige, and the only thing that she has, the only duty that she has is to provide an heir. Because in a medieval society, that heir can prevent civil war, it can prevent many people dying. Eh? So the Americans, they look at this and they're like, oh, sexismus, oh, misogynismus. Yeah. So because the king has to go out in battle and risk his life, that's expected. I mean, that, that is normal. I mean, when Joffrey refused to go into battle, that was cowardly. Oh, Joffrey, weak. Eh? But if a woman is expected to give birth, oh, sexismus, oh, misogynismus. Eh? So now I'm looking at uh, more American intelligentsia. I mean, people much smarter and wiser than I am, which are uh, the journalists, right? Like, look, you're a normal human, but when you start working at CBR, you become enlightened. It's uh, the new way of taking the path of the guru. And they're claiming that House of the Dragon has internalized misogyny. Okay, so let me translate to you what internalized misogyny is. Like, in the United States, you, you have academics, mostly men, by the way, who came up to the conclusion that all women in the United States are being oppressed. Every single one, regardless of income, regardless of wealth, regardless of age, from the moment they are born until they die, they are oppressed. Because apparently, every single man enjoys, I guess, according to them, oppressing their daughters, their wives, their sisters, for no apparent reason, right? That's the patriarchy. Right, so the patriarchy oppresses women. They're the magical cock and balls in the sky that for whatever reason they like to oppress women. So women, like they, they have this kinship. They, they have this sorority. It's almost like being born in the same family. And, and they are helping each other. They have to help each other, right? In order to overthrow the system, which is capitalism. You didn't expect that, did you? But that's what the third wave feminism likes to say. Right? So, like, women need to develop this class conscious, like the proletariat, in order to overthrow capitalism. And once they have socialism, they will have equality. And if they disagree with this assessment, if they disagree with the fact that, well, hold on a little bit. Like, not all women are oppressed, you know? Like, some women have it better than others. Like, for example, Michelle Obama has it much better than a random white chick in a trailer, right? No, that is internalized misogyny. So they created an ideology which cannot be debunked. If you're a woman and you disagree with that assessment, well, you're suffering from internalized misogyny. If you're a man and you disagree with that assessment, well, then you're a misogynist. And we know what happens to misogynists. They get fired. You want to get fired? No, they shut the fuck up. Let them dismantle capitalismus. Anyway, right, let's look at... This interesting article, House of the Dragon, Internalized Misogyny is the show's ultimate enemy. Oh my fucking God. So apparently this is because uh, Raneria, which according to Dub is the lead character, when she's declared to be heir, her most outright contenders have all proven to be women. House of the Dragon haven't shied away from depicting the physical harm women endure, but it's taken its time to really delve into how women in power are the utmost enemy towards their fellow kind. Oh my fucking god, it's almost like your fucking ideology that all women are born under the same family and they should treat each other as they treat their mother it is false. Right? Like, it doesn't exist. In other words, you have the family unit, which people care about the most, and then you have strangers. Why the fuck would the person give a shit if a stranger manages to ascend to the position of queen? Because this is like what they fail to understand. Like, yeah, sure, in Game of Thrones, people care about their houses the most, and then they care about their close friends and associates, and then they don't give a shit about strangers. Like, how exactly would the queen that was, Rhaenerys Targaryen, benefit if this chica, Ranera, manages to get on the throne. What, what exactly would her benefit be? Like, would she get any power or wealth just because she ha she's a woman? 
It doesn't fucking work that way. Like, imagine this, right? Imagine that your wife or your mother is at a company, right? And she wants to ascend to the position of CEO. But another woman manages to ascend to the position of CEO. Does your mom benefit? Does she gain anything? Why would she be happy about that? She just lost the opportunity. Like, this American ideology completely fails to understand the human existence. I mean, let me put it this way. Imagine... If another man, just like you, manages to become a CEO, does that affect you in any way? I mean, if he is your brother, if he is your father, if he is your son, sure. Yeah, that, that will change things. But he, if he is a fucking stranger, even if he is from your same neighborhood, even if he grew up on the house next door but you never talked to him, how will that change anything? And why do you think it's different for women? Like, who the fuck thought that, oh, yes, sure, um, this individual who almost became queen, but it was taken away from her because they wanted to have a man on the throne, she should be really happy and she should try to help this other woman to become the queen just because. Like, no, of course, she's going to be vindictive. She's going to be, well, fuck it. You know, I didn't manage to become queen. She's not going to either. Why would I help her? Like she's not getting anything from helping her. She's going to try to push her own house to gain more power, whether it's her brother, her son, or her father, or whomever. It doesn't really matter. As long as they gain power and her house benefits, that's what she's going to focus on because that's the human existence. People care more about families than they care about artificially created political groups. There is no such thing as like women as an identity. That's a demographic. But family is a strong identity. And this is the difference between modern left-wing thought and modern right-wing thought. Right-wingers, they care about families. Left-wing people care about institutions. They care about gaining power and control. Right-wing people care about furthering their own family. Ideologically, I mean, you can be a right-winger and care about institutions, but I'm talking about the philosophy of right-wingers. Now... What's also interesting is that none of these characters, to me at least, from this show, are sympathetic. This lady wants power for power's sake. I can't relate to that. You know, it's like, oh, well, her father wanted a son and uh, got a girl instead, so now she wants to be tomboyish to prove her father. I don't fucking care. That's not an interesting story. Danny from Game of Thrones, however, she was interesting, right? Like, initially, she didn't want power at all. Like, her brother wanted power. But then she was sold to Karl Drogo and eventually fell in love with Karl Drogo. And then she had a goal to free all the slaves, right? That's a noble goal. Like she didn't want power her for herself. She wanted power to help others. And that's why she went to Westeros in order to break the wheel. And it turned out that she was a little crazy in the end. But like, at that point, like her ambitions were interesting. Like, she wanted power to help others. That's a noble reason to want power. What what these girls in this new Game of Thrones adaptation want is like, oh, they want power. Why? So that they can be queen. Why? So, so that they can be the first queen. Okay, not interesting. I'm sorry, but like, I can't relate to that. Right? Like, she doesn't want power in order to improve the life of the peasantry. She doesn't want power in order to fix some wrongs. or anything. No, she just wants power because, like, well, she's a woman and she can have it. And you're like, okay. Meh. That's the same like saying, oh, well, she's from this house that never got to rule and now she wants to rule. Like, hmm. But anyway, let me know what you guys think, though. And I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.